Hello, welcome to Bible Guru. Thank you for joining us in our journey through the Bible. Revelation chapter 14, beginning at verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write, Blessed are the dead in the Lord who die from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, in order that they will rest from their labors and their works follow them. And I looked, and look, a white cloud, and on the cloud, sitting one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice, and the one sitting on the cloud, Send your sickle, and reap, for the hour to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And the one sitting on the cloud threw his sickle on the earth, and the earth was harvested. And another angel came out from the temple of heaven, also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the altar, having authority over fire, and he yelled with a huge voice to the one with the sharp sickle, saying, Send your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for the grapes are ready. Verse 19. And the angel threw his sickle into the earth and harvested the vines of the earth and threw them into the winepress of God's anger. And the winepress was stamped outside the city and blood flowed to the bridles of the horses from the winepress, a distance of a bit less than 200 miles. What makes you happy? I can tell you what makes you happy. Dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. The best way to produce those hormones and neurotransmitters is to exercise, eat a healthy diet with lots of different plants, pray, have purpose in your life, do the things that help other people, and be in a community where you see others helping each other often and where you get to help them often have a purpose, and have healthy relationships, preferably within the family including affection like hugs and intimacy in a positive way. We can also stimulate those same happy pathways by eating carbohydrates and chocolate. Really, if you've ever heard of comfort food, it is a real thing. We can um, make ourselves happy by thinking about the things that we're grateful for, by going for a walk in the sunshine, by seeing likes or messages on our mobiles. And of course, you can get similar feelings by viewing sites that perversely mimic healthy relational behavior and by taking drugs that mimic the functions of the natural feel-good chemicals. But those paths tend to be very addictive and destructive. What makes you not happy? The flip side of what makes us happy is what makes us not happy a sedentary lifestyle, lacking a spiritual center, a life without service and purpose that has stress and strained relationships, addictions, loneliness, and a lack of friendships and bonding. The diseases of our current generation. It seems like the last days will be filled with such problems. Paul described it this way. He said there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. It looks like a formula for an unhappy generation. Those living in the last days will have to swim against the current in order to live a life that leads to joy and fulfillment. For those enduring the great tribulation, the last of the last days, it will be even worse. The real happiness will come in the rest that results from death. Truly, this world is not our home. 
Our greatest joy and happiness and fulfillment and reward will be ours only when we rest in the everlasting arms. Yet for happiness in this era, Jesus' words are just as paradoxical and true as they were when he proclaimed them from the mountainside. How happy are the humble-minded, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. How happy are those who know what sorrow means, for they will be given courage and comfort. Happy are those who claim nothing, for the whole earth will belong to them. Happy are those who are hungry and thirsty for goodness, for they will be fully satisfied. Happy are the merciful, for they will have mercy shown to them. Happy are the utterly sincere, for they will see God. Happy are those who make peace, for they will be sons of God. Happy are those who have suffered persecution for the cause of goodness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And what happens? Sorry, John. And what happiness will be yours when people blame you and ill-treat you and say all kinds of slanderous things against you for my name's sake? Be glad. Yes, be tremendously glad, for your reward in heaven is magnificent. They persecuted the prophets before your time in exactly the same way. By the way, that's a Philip's translation, just such a nice translation. A prayer for today. Father, we want to be happy. Please, teach us to love each other, to make peace. Teach us to humble ourselves. Teach us to be punished only because we have done right and never because we've done wrong. Give us your spirit so we can forgive and bring restoration and goodness in life. Fill us with energy to get off our backside and work and walk and live and give and forgive and heal. And when the time comes, teach us to come to you joyfully, hearing those blessed words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Then we will be happiest of all. In the name of Jesus, amen.